Okay. Okay. So we looked at this. Oh. Is that shift tab to go back? Well, I wanted to talk first about interpersonal frequency. How do you go back now? There we go. Nope. This one. Keyboard. Left button. Ta da. Okay, so interpersonal frequency, that's ifsite.com. Um, we're an agency, fully remote, fully distributed agency. And actually, headquartered not too far from here, and there's a certain number of us who are here or on the East Coast with some West Coast and a couple people abroad. Um, we do municipal governments, public utilities, libraries, that's our sector. And having that kind of narrow focus has enabled us to sort of create sites that are specialty that we can sort of whip together quickly. You know, we've really worked to have base um, site builds that go quickly and, and then we add them on and build them out to customize them. I, I like working at IF. I don't have any experience at any other agencies, so no embarrassment, but um, we, especially since I've been here, it's like the agency matured and we really worked on our culture and became much more of a team in the past five years than when I first started. And part of that was um, adopting principles of how we want to treat each other and what our values are. And I think by posting those values and making them so accessible to everybody, you don't even join the company unless you align. You know? Okay. Um, I'm on the engineering department. We have a user experience department and a sort of data <coughs> department. And I'm on engineering. And we've divided ourselves into teams. And they're, the way I like to look at it is we have a team looking to the future. And they are. Um, building what is the fastest and best and newest, and that happens to use a certain amount of React, right? We're decoupling now, and the front end is uh, is not Drupal anymore. It's, it's and we're building uh, the theme in React. <coughs> then we have this other direction over here, where I am solidly planted, which is maintaining the sites in uh, support and evolution, uh, or Evolution and support, or eggs and sausage. I'm trying to get that to catch on. So, uh, evolution and support. We are basically having sites that, um, you know, the clients come in and they put a ton of money into these things and time and effort, and they want to maintain, right? Uh, and they want to build onto them. And they want them to be cooler now. They don't want to rebuild something. They want what they have to work real well. So, you know, that's how it's going, right? And in our team, I'm sure it's echoed in other agencies. So I'm going to talk about stuff we're doing in evolution support, basically. I am Jackie Young, also known as Jackie Tenderwolf, who anybody knew Hawkeye. I was an auctioneer for 20 years. I sold stuff to the highest bidder. And then uh, I started going to Drupal camps and Drupal cons with my partner. And he was speaking a language I didn't understand. <laughs> but I kept going and eventually said, I'm going to become a Drupal developer. And um, I took a computer science class in January of 2018, intro to computer science, and then a bunch of other classes until I took <coughs> Drupal Easy in the end of that year. Changed my whole life. Drupal Easy, I, I always like to give a shout out when I do a presentation because it was really great. And if you have people on your team who want to join your team and just need to get fundamentals together, it was amazing for me. Now I teach for Drupal Easy. And I also mentor for Drupal Easy. So in January 2019, I came on an interpersonal frequency as a intern. And that turned into a full-time opportunity with six months later. <clears throat> One of the things that I love about Drupal is, and, and about IF, our, our commitment to these ideals of transparency. 
and collaboration and community. So I like to say I came for the community and stayed for the code. One of the questions that comes up is why React in particular? You know, why not Vue, JS, for example? Why React? Well, for us, you know, as part of our collaborative effort, we're all sort of leveling up together on the engineering team. Like, we have a program now for learning, for training and professional development, and we tend to learn the same stuff so that we can work together and collaborate more easily. And React is what we've agreed on. Is it particularly the, the best? I don't know. But I know that we use it, and so I It's a good choice. Thank you. <laughs> so does everybody know how React works and why it's different from Drupal? Basically, it's just faster, right? So it's, uh, it's a library of code snippets um, that basically enables you, one, if, provided that you're um, able to get the data from the server quickly to your uh, DOM, then it re relates to that quickly in your DOM, as opposed to having to go and get the data over and over in a remote server. So why that's fun is that all of a sudden your user, your end user, has this experience of speed and efficiency, and it's like interactive, as opposed to any kind of waiting. It feels more like a desktop app at that point. Um, I also want to say that I've done a number of presentations. I did presentations before I could code for, you know, if you went to the beginning uh, opening, she said, you don't have to code. Well, I didn't code at all. And I started talking at Drupal conferences and camps before 2018. So if you have something to offer the community, I, I have found it to be a very welcoming place. So yeah. So this time, when I decided to, that I was going to present, I brought it to the whole team, because that's the new push, right? And uh, so the code that I'm going to show today is from my team, and I didn't necessarily write it, but I have implemented it or used it or played with it, uh, or been on the team to, to enhance it. OK. Why React Calendar? So. We have a big county in North Carolina. So many departments. It's just a huge site with uh, lots of departments and parks and libraries and literally thousands of events. And they're using the recurring events module to manage their events. That's not really important for the React app because we can use any way to store the events. I'm just mentioning that's what they're using. And so they can set up an event that they're going to have every week for the next year. And already, so you have, you know, 52 events immediately to, to handle. We had an old views calendar display that was very slow. It didn't always show everything. Sometimes it would time out. And if you tried to look at it on the phone, you'd be very disappointed. It was simply not responsive. So it became important to us to solve this problem, slow and ugly. Okay? That's like a good problem to solve. So Drupal sources the back end. CMS provides the necessary APIs for data retrieval. And React to build the front end calendar components. Uh, the communication between Drupal and React used REST APIs, routes. So these routing YAMLs. Right? Yeah. Um, the React component is called uh, React Calendar. There's also one called Mini Calendar, and so those were the actual libraries we used. They're already responsive, and we just had to get the data to it, essentially. So this is sort of the map of how it works, and I personally love our end user. <laughs> Um, so we're, we're basically pulling like little pieces of data over. Just we using routes. We'll go get taxonomy, or we'll get the event, uh, or the date, and we can. It goes into our little calendar or our little mini calendar, which is smaller on the in the block, as opposed to the whole page, um, and also to the search form, so that you can say, I just want to see library events, uh, you know, in the, this month, or library events on Tuesdays, or whatever. So now that this is, it's just a module, right? 
So we built basically a module. So you require it just like you would uh, any module and install it, enable it. And then we do have to go in and do some custom configurations to make sure that it works with whatever project we're working on. Um, we store it in the custom theme, right? So modules custom, as opposed to letting it store in a repository and pulling it in that way. It's actually just plopped right into the project. Um, and then caching, we installed at the Drupal level, which enhances performance. So if you do a search, um, it gets stored in that search. You do it once, and all of a sudden, it's very quick if you come back to search for that same thing, or even if anybody comes to search for that same thing. It was also didn't require a whole lot of change over time. It was just real fast. We just turned off the view and switched on the new app. And then we started using SAS and some JavaScript. Um, so, let, do you want to go see it? Yeah. Oh, and I also wanted to say that we build these once and reuse them uh, for lots of projects. It's a great little thing for that. So you put a bunch of time in, and then all of a sudden you can just, any client who wants it, they can have it too. Okay, so let's go see if I can pull up. You sort of lose my tabs, but I think, yeah, here we go. So this is what it looks like now. And if I load it again, let's see what that looks like. I really like the little turn button. Okay. You shouldn't have done it. I should <laughs> not have done it. Well, in the meantime, let's go look at it in at 470. Is this headless or is this the, the Drupal UI and it's a block on the page? It's a block on the page. Okay. Yeah. So it's not headless. The new sites we're building are headless. So the module creates a placeable block. The module creates a placeable block. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you still communicate from JS to Drupal using REST API, not doing Ajax requests. Goes from Drupal to React. Yeah, because I mean, the React component is embedded in uh, on a page that was rendered by Drupal. Yeah. So it's not headless, but you still use RESTful API from your React app to communicate to Drupal. So you're not utilizing the Ajax engine or mechanism that is already built into Drupal. So right. Still, okay. So you can technically you can just take that component and use it on a completely different side and it will still work. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go see if it loaded. I wanted you to see the cute little thing that spins, but we saw it, right? <laughs> you guys have this in a GitHub repo? Repo? We do not. Okay. I thought about that today, though. Like, why not contribute? You know, so I'll, I'll bring it back to the team and talk to them about that because I actually think it is a it's cool enough to share. Any more questions about the calendar? I mean, I love the calendar so much because a lot of time and effort went into fixing this real serious problem that all of our sites were having. And now we have something that's being included immediately with all new sites. All right, so the headless sites are, get it right away. Could you do a list view of dates? <laughs> no, no. What does the grid look like? I think the grid is just like, yeah, it's just like that. I guess you could, but uh, I don't know that that's that we have that. We do have the search and filter. So that's part of the React component as well. Yes, it is. Yeah, I have a question about the data retrieval. Um, you said that the data is collected through um, paths that are defined in the routing. File. In a routing panel, yeah. Did you also consider, did your team consider using like Drupal's view REST API sort of? I think, exposure? do you know the answer to that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a performance consideration. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Andrew is on the back end and I'm on the more front end. More. Okay. Um, All right, 
So another way we use little React apps is our how do I. So this is just to replace replace the giant nasty mega menus <laughs> uh, that are really hard to navigate. They act more like a map of the site, and you're I can you know you can see you're trying to find the department you need and where you think it might be, you know, and you're like searching through this long drop down, and so. Uh, clients had us redesign menus, which I enjoyed doing, you know, making them simpler and like that. But then others wanted like a how do I thing for their most used things. People needed to get to certain departments, needed to pay their taxes, or they needed to sign up for softball, whatever was being used. Um, and so we built the how do I interactive app in React. And we often combine both solutions. Let's fix your menu, make it easier to use, and give you a how do I app. So with this one, I thought what we could do is um, look at how a content editor would set, set up a how do I. So it, I really enjoy the how do I. I think that the clients like it and the end users really like it. They enjoy being able to just find what they need. It makes it more like a game in a way. Um, and what I like is that I can just drop it, configure it, and it's good to go. So let's go through. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. All right, here's Johnson County. I'm on. Um, this is best basically our development site, our main F2 main. Um, it's not in production, so we're not looking at production. And we are logged in. So here's the little how do I app. Um, we have it in a couple of different versions. The one is just spread across the whole page like that. Now there's like a little sidebar that's also very cute. And then we have one that's out now in our all of our new sites that's like a tabbed version. I'll show that too. So basically you say, I need to pay my taxes, and you click on pay taxes, or I need to, uh, I need to register my vehicle, I need to register to vote, and then it'll take you to the page you need to go. Again, it's a block. <clears throat> See, I think I pulled up, I set it up, oh, yeah, so it's basically like a menu. When you go in, um, it's we have admin structure, taxonomy, manage, how do I overview? And then you just can, you know, set it up just like you would a menu. And then you would go in and edit the, which it would be the link you're going to, and also what happens if you hover, what do you get? Can't see anything. Well, that's that. Okay, let's go look at it um, in the news. One of the news sites. So, in the news sites, you would just tab through what you want to do. And it's a very different experience than a mega menu to me, even though it's still kind of a menu. So it looks like you use taxonomies to build a structure. So what if the same page can be under more than one tree? Well, that's a good question. Uh, well, right now it's not set up that way. So we would probably prob we would probably have to do some big configuring, rewriting to get it to do or uh, add it twice or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or would you go just put it in two different trees? Maybe. You'd have the same length. Right. Yeah, but just look at the... Uh... Yeah. Okay. I can't see why you couldn't do that, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think in Drupal you can even have more than one parent for taxonomy but it breaks the UI for some reason. Yeah. All right. 
the last use case that we have that, um, that's very common in Hay uh, are, are for microsite search. So I'm going to admit that <coughs> microsites are a contentious and debated topic at IF. So some people just don't like them at all. Um, but I really do, and I like them because our clients like them. So it's basically you have you know your big site, and then you have this little subsite, or essentially it's a microsite. It's under the same, but it's themed differently. It feels differently. They have their permissions are different, so different people can control that site. Um, so one client of ours has two microsites already. They're asking for another. And another client recently added on a password protected microsite that people pay to be able to enter. And a third wants six different WordPress sites from people who have independently built things and they want to pull them in under the Drupal roof. And our, the newest version of our sites has, because this is common now, it has microsite feature built in so we can automatically create a um, microsite. So I'm going to show Denver Tap. So Denver Water, we do, like I said, we did uh, public utilities, and Denver Water had a worker site for their Tap group. And Tap are these super talented like content <coughs> editing people. Like they, they're all newspaper, former newspaper writers, journalists, and photographers and videographers, and they are super like. They wanted to keep all the creative control that they could, and they wanted to look different and feel different than the rest of the site. They had very specific criteria, so we we built them a microsite, and it does look and feel different than the rest of the site. And it's also the most active and visited part of the site. So good for them. And when we did that, we wanted, and actually this is a change. At first we did, we did do build a React app using Elasticsearch, and then when we switched them to Swift type, then we needed to reconfigure the whole application. They wanted Swift type. It offered sophisticated control on search and boosting and more, and it gave them dashboards to configure all that. Um, third party, right, third party dashboard to configure all that. So we needed to create an admin interface, um, on page meta tags and the React app. Um, I have some documentation about that if anybody's interested. One of the things that's really great about you know being able to reuse these things is that we document it, it makes it easy for the next developer to work on it. All right, I think I pulled up tab. Yeah, here's tap. So here's what their site looks like. I could pull up Denver Water and you can see how different it is. <coughs> yeah, so that's the main the main site. It's still blue, you know, it's water. But tap. Here's that. So you can say, you know, I just want to look at community things. Oh, there's none. Oh, <laughs> here. There we go. Or you only want to look at Spanish language. Like that. So yeah, this is how we're using little React apps to make our clients happy. This is my tethering. <laughs> Hello. All right, let's just look at video. Sure. No, let's go back to the calendar, sure. 
I'm gonna well, first of all, I just want to say like plus one to contributing that because I, I was working recently on a calendar feature and everything is ugly and slow out there. That's yeah. contributed like I, I think we ended up going with like full calendar and like that library and yeah, it's not great. It does not look as good as this. So. Many people would appreciate it. If, yeah, plus if one here too. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah plus one. Um, also, uh, like Jackie, we also have an alternate, an alternative to the recurring event module. Um, yeah, that actually works now properly. Doesn't it? I'm sure everyone has had a hard story that uses that module. Yeah, I ended up going with date recur actually. Date like, recur. I started with recurring events, and like we ran into an issue. I think it was like trying to display the view or something like that. Where it was just like you, it was a very specific way that you had to set it up, and I think like with contextual filters, it wasn't working yeah. or something like that. So yeah, when yeah. Call were, me like, I, if you ever need to use it. I have a lot of experience. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I can touch for sure. Yeah. But I was I was just gonna re. I know you already stated this, but like, what was the React component that you're actually using? Uh, it's yeah. called React Calendar. It's just called React. Calendar. Yeah. yeah. There's React Calendar and there's Mini Calendar. <laughs> <clears throat> we used both because sometimes we wanted just a little calendar. Yeah, did you mention like you actually have some WordPress sites become part of the yeah. searchable? Because we have WordPress sites that we've migrated in. Oh, in migrate yeah, we migrated Drupal. into Drupal and then they become okay. either microsites or just part of the larger site. So when you say microsites, it's still part of the same Drupal site? Right. So it just looks and feels different. And we give them their own content types usually, that they then have permission, you know, we set permissions for those content types so that editors and can you do access just that stuff. Are you using groups or something? To we do, we did for that, um, we have two sites right now using groups that um, had a lot of departments and a lot of like uh, desire for control. And also for that paid, Password protected site, they use groups. Yeah. Is it called groups or group? It's group. 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 Group, yeah. It should be called groups. But it is called group. <laughs> yeah. Did you say you're going to share some of the document? Because you want to Sure. Going? You want to see the document? Yeah. Okay. Because that hyperlink doesn't work for us. No. <laughs> This is just our README file for this module. Is there any way we can get the URL? Is this hard to? Of course it is. Um, I can find out how to add the when if this comes out, how to add documentation, and I'll just copy the cool. README. Thank you. Make a note. Anybody else have like notes that are like about groceries and also everything else they want to do? Uh, add documentation to GoCom. This might be kind of a technical question, but I was wondering how did you? Uh, Compile or manage? What did you use to compile your JavaScript uh, for your React libraries? And what approaches do you recommend? Yeah, we use, we use Node. So we have Leap Run, NPM Run Build. Um, and it's, it's compiled to create, create React app, or do you use like Webpack? Um, we use Webpack. Um, you're getting on the spot here. Sorry. <laughs> we do that with 95% certainty. And then um, on deployments and on builds, we run the we, we do the run build um, for the React apps just alongside our theme, just like any other sort of. And do you invoke those libraries like in the library file, or uh, you want to so look like the end the end result. So the end is also just a module, right? Yeah, it's just a module. Yeah. 
if I have the library to like the twig file, and then that's what generates. I got up. Let's see. One of my problems with using anything that uses a shadow DOM is like having to load the JavaScript. Um, you can bring it up, Jackie. It's in the library's YAML file. You can see the. Uh, you can bring up the calendar library. It's right there. It should be. Yeah. That right there, that calendar disk bundled up JS, I believe. Okay, great. Will it load globally or only on the pages where it's uh, where the block is in place? Only the, yeah, only the block is in place. And if you bring up the plugin block, it should, there should be a, um, the library should be added when the block is instantiated. Tell me what you want to see. Um, under source. Under source, yeah. Plugin. I have calendar. Yeah, source, Just plugin source. Search block? Yes. That's a search block. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I can I bring it I can probably make it bigger. Perfect. So what does event terms JSON is that like what's that? That would be SD, yeah. Yeah, that's your rest end point. It's the rest end point. So you're not building them elsewhere, are you just you just you have a controller inside? Okay. That provides all that information that's then um ingested by the React app. Um This is also it doesn't matter. What is that? There's been a push, like with, I think, I definitely know with Pantheon, but I'm not sure with Aqua, for supporting uh, decoupled sites with a Drupal backend. Uh, we're on Pantheon, I'm with the Smithsonian, and we launched a small data app uh, <coughs> that uses, it, it just makes, it's an XJS app, so it's, it's React, and uh, but the thing is, like the, the struggle for us is, we either have to go either fully decoupled, or not. And I would like to have progressively decoupled approaches, which is why I'm very interested in your approach here. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I don't understand the the print the the the, print, the basis of that. You have to do it. It's just you don't have to, but it's like the recommendations. Are, okay. You know, like, either no JavaScript. Like I've been to a couple of different. You know, we want to minimize the JavaScript footprint, and then others that say, I see. you know. I get it. Yeah. So. I like to pick and choose and do what feels best, and yeah. you know, like that. Right. The press of decoupling helps you, like to, to Jackie's point, because she's not able to support. Um, it keeps the older sites alive longer before they need to be, you know, rebuilt from scratch. So, you know, then the three components, the how do I, the search, and the counter, all the examples of that. Thank you all. Thank you.